are you still finding it difficult and challenging to use a multimeter and you seem not to understand how it works how to read values correctly and setting it up at the right range for the appropriate testing of a particular value of a resistor voltage or current well in this video you're going to learn how to use it well just like a pro will use it and also learn the mistakes people make when handling the device but wait which is then easy you will ask because there are a lot of digital multimeters out there so which do i use well honestly it doesn't really matter what matters is how you use them the right way. Before you can now think of using advanced meters like this one, which is a true RMS meter, and it's what I will be using for this video. But just know, everything still applies. The only difference might just be your meter limitation, which may not have other functions that might have. And that's okay for a beginner who is just starting up. As long as it has the most important things like voltage, current, resistance, diode test, and continuity test. So make sure not to forget to hit that like button and leave your questions in the comments. I will reply to as many I can. And if you're new to this channel, remember to hit that subscribe button too. Never insert the black probe into the positive terminal and insert the red into the COM terminal. This is wrong. It might result in negative reading values or wrong reading. So plug it correctly. Avoid holding the tips of your probes when testing mostly high voltages. This might get you electrocuted. So make sure your hands are away from it. So we begin by testing the values of these resistors. Remember, setting your probes this way enables you to test for all other quantities, exception for current tests alone. You will have to change your positive probe, but the black still remains. The first resistor is 100 ohms, so we set the knob to a 100 value, which is 600. This means the multimeter is conditioned to read any value of resistor from 0 to 600 ohms. So we have the 100 ohms resistor. And if I test that, we see a value less than 100, which is 98.4 ohms, and that's fine. The fourth band of a resistor or last band is normally the tolerance, and the tolerance of this 100 ohms is plus and minus 5%. So a 100 plus 5% will be 100.05 ohms, and if we do a 100, minus 5% we get 99.95 ohms so our resistor should be between these values but it has only lost 1% of its resistance due to temperature changes in the room this other resistor its value is greater than 10k so we set the knob to the value greater than 10k and we have 21.68 kilo ohms but it is a 22 kilo ohms resistor it's still close to that value which is okay since it has just lost 0.26% of its resistance, what about this resistor? Its value is greater than 100k. So where do we set the knob at? We set the knob to a value greater than 100k and it reads 215.6k instead of a 220k ohms. Remember, tolerance applies always. This other resistor is up to a million. So we take the knob to a 6 million value. As we do that, we get 993, which is close to a mega ohms. Still, tolerance still applies. So don't be confused when you don't get the value you expect from a resistor. You should always know your resistor color code so you find resistor color bands easy to tell. To test for diode, we set the knob to diode test. But if we look the meter, it doesn't read anything. But why? Because it's not like an average meter, you can just set the knob to diode test and get a straight reading. So all we need to do is to switch it from continuity test as default to diode test by pressing the select key and we get a reading. A diode only reads one direction. If we flip the diode and it does read, the diode should be faulty. But as you can see, it doesn't read. So the diode is in a good condition. Here is an LED. This point is called the post known as the anode, while here is called the anvil, known as the cathode. To test if it works, we clip the positive probe on the anode terminal and the negative clipped to the cathode terminal and we get the voltage drop for this LED, which is 1.6 volts, and the green draws 1.8 volts. So to test for continuity, to know if this wire is still in a good condition. Now the meter has returned back to its default test, which is continuity test. 
not in diode test anymore. So we clip this point of the wire at the other end and we hear a beeping sound which means the wire is in a good condition. This capacitor value is rated at 470 microfarad. Rotate the knob to the capacitance test and clip the terminals according to its polarity and we get 435.3 microfarad and that's okay. This is an alkaline battery. It's rated at 1.5 volt. So we rotate the knob to 6 volt since it's greater than 600 millivolt. That means any voltage greater than 6 volt, you move the knob to value greater than 6 volt. So we rotate the knob to 6 volt. Place your probes according to your battery polarity and we get a reading of 1.5 volt, which means our battery is in a good condition. If we flip the probes polarities, we get a negative voltage. This battery is rated 3.2 volt. So we place the probe again and we get a negative 0.2 volt. So the battery is faulty. This laptop charger is rated 20 volt. So we move the knob from 6 to 60 volt. Clip the negative terminal and there is no way this can go in here. So we change the probe and now we get 20.5 volt. Mind you, if you don't know the voltage you're going to be working with, simply set the knob at its maximum range, 600 volt or 1000 volt depending on your meter ranges. Do not exceed the rated value unless you want to get a new one. But if you don't, save your multimeter from getting damaged. We can also test voltage drop of a circuit for each component. Place your probes in parallel with the component you want to test for. The green LED has a voltage drop of 2.2 volt and the red LED, its voltage drop is 1.9 volt and the blue has a voltage drop of 2.8 volt and the resistor, it's just 1.6 volt. AC voltage ranges from 120 volt to 240 volt. So make sure you set the knob to value greater than 300 volt. Remember, not to touch the terminals of the probe when testing high voltages. Electricity is really dangerous and can kill. Do not insert the positive probe in first into an outlet. Instead, insert the black in before the red probe. And as we do that, we have a reading of 198 volt close to 200 volt depending on my region yours might have a different reading depending on the frequency your country operates at to test for a frequency you can see this meter displays ac volt on its screen press the select key and it switches itself to frequency mode and immediately we get a reading of 50 hertz and that will be different for every country around the world you can use this to know the frequency at which your country operates with this multimeter can test for NCV, known as non-contact voltage. It's used to detect live wires around an area without having any physical contact with the cables. This multimeter can also read for temperature. Rotate the knob to temperature test and it does have a probe made specifically for it. With this small temperature sensor at the end. So let's insert the probe and after doing that, we get a reading of my room temperature right now, which is 30 degrees Celsius. And increasing the temperature, I use this heat blower and we see our value scaling up. Not all multimeters will have these three functions I just showed you, like frequency, NCV test and temperature. To test the current in a circuit, you must have to change the positive probe alone to milliamp or 20 amps, depending on which you want to test for. So insert it into milliamps. Remember not to exceed the value of your multimeter like this one, it can only read up to 600 milliamps of current max and 20 amps max. Do not exceed any of this value. You will get your meter destroyed and we see it says 10 second max each 15 minutes. It usually tells us for how long our multimeter can be connected. For example, 20 amps for 10 seconds and must be disconnected for 15 minutes to cool down. So I set my knob to 600 milliamps of current max for the current I will be measuring. When testing for current in a circuit, do not place the probe in parallel with the circuit as you would do for voltage testing. This might get your meter damaged. Instead, place it in series with the circuit. So I took out one side of the battery wire from the circuit and placed it where there is no conduction and placed the probe in series with the circuit and you can see it draws 11 milliamps of current. Okay, let's check out this series of LED circuit. As I test it, you can see it draws 17.6 milliamps of current. If you divide that by one amp, 
which is 1000 you will get 0 0.07 amps let's see that take out the probe and insert it in the 20 amp terminal switch it up to 20 amp and now if we measure the current we get 0 0.07 amp to test an ac current all we need to do is press the select key to switch from dc to ac mode but for your meter you have to do that manually but using a multimeter for AC current will not be safe because it measures up to 20 amp. Any current exceeding this will damage it. But using a clammeter would be better. And you can see we have 1.03 amp. But clamping two wires would cancel themselves out. Except there is a leakage in between those wires. This load wire reads 1.5 amp of current. And this one here reads 0.60 amp of current. This is known as hybrid forward emitter used in determining the current gain of a transistor. This is a popular BC547 transistor we all know. So let's find out its current gain by inserting it into its socket. Since it is an NPN, we place it in where we have NPN and we get the current gain of the transistor. To confirm if our transistor is in a good condition, we rotate the knob to diode test and press the select key to switch from default to diode test. Before we test, let me make you understand this. When testing a bipolar transistor, you should understand this. It's like you testing two diodes, but testing one at a time. And that's how bipolar transistors are tested. This first arrangement means NPN setup. So, place the negative probe at the collector terminal and positive at the base and we get a reading. Repeat this for the second side and we still get a reading. Now let's read this in reverse as PNP. It shouldn't read. Place the positive probe at the collector terminal and place the black at the base and we get no reading. And repeat this process for the second side and still no reading. So this transistor is good. It's like you testing a diode in reverse which we know it shouldn't read because diode only reads one side. Let's test the next transistor which is still a BC547. We place the black probe at the collector and place the positive at the base and we get a reading which is 0.1 instead of 0.6 which is a required voltage to turn on a transistor okay let's not judge yet so read the second side of the transistor and you can see we have no reading so already this transistor is bad and if you do a reverse test you can see the first side reads again with the same value and the second side still don't read so this transistor is totally bad the third transistor is a bc558 and it's a pnp this diode arrangement explains everything how we are going to test for it if you do want me to make a video on how to test transistor and identify between an npn and pnp leave a comment and i will surely do that so since it is a pnp place the positive proof at the collector and negative proof at the base and we get a reading do the same for the other side and we still get a reading reversing the polarities the first side gets no reading and the second side still no reading so which means this transistor is in a good condition you can figure out yours if it's bad from the understanding you got from the npn result the pnp will just have an opposite result all right let me ask you is there anything you didn't understand? Let me know in the comment section. And what other new thing have you learned from this video? Also, share that in the comment section. And finally, do you think the multimeter still confuses you? If so, why not share that too? Okay, that's all for this video. Remember to like, share this video with others to help them too. If you found out this video was helpful, make sure to appreciate this channel by clicking that subscribe button for more interesting content. See you next time.